Hello guys, in this video I'm going to talk about protein gel staining methods, mainly the most common two methods, Comasi Brilliant Blue and Silver Staining. So after doing gel electrophoresis or protein electrophoresis, uh, like uh, SDS page, 2D electrophoresis, uh, zymography, we need to stain the gel to visualize the protein bands. Uh, to do so, we need to first wash the gel to remove the excess compound like SDS and other materials. Then we need to fix the protein on the gel and then we need to uh, perform the chemical reaction that will give the protein some color so we can recognize the protein portion from the background. So usually we have those steps for every staining procedure. First, we need to wash, then fixation of a protein, then washing again, staining and de-staining. De-staining means removing the excess amount of dye to increase the contrast between the band and the surrounding background area. So, first of all, we usually use the R250 dye. We usually use this kind of dye uh, with methanol and glacial acetic acid. Uh, in this case, the dye will bind to the protonated amino acids, mainly lysine, arginine, and histidine by electrostatic interactions, and also through hydrophobic interactions to aromatic amino acids like phenylalanine, thyrosine, and tryptophan. After staining, we should de-stain either by using water or by de-staining solution, which contains methanol and glacial acetic acid. So, in this case, the bands will appear in blue color on a transparent uh, background and also the because there is no chemical modifications occur on the uh, protein so the gel can be completely de-stained and this can be used either for re-staining by using more sensitive dye more sensitive uh, staining method like silver staining or it can be subjected for analytical method like uh, mass spectrometry uh, Usually, Comasi Brilliant Blue can give sensitivity as little as 10 to 250 nanogram per band. And also, it can give some uh, information about the quantity. So, the more Denise band reflects higher amount of a protein um, than the other light bands. Uh, the advantages of this method that is cheap and easy to perform and quick, but also as we said, it's much less sensitive than other staining methods like silver staining and also low reproducibility. The other uh, method is to use the dye G250, which is more expensive than the R250. Similar chemical structure, but this one, G250, has uh, two additional methyl groups, uh, which is allow for more sensitive reaction. It can detect as little as 4 nanogram per band. And also, similarly, it can interact with proteinated amino acids like arginine, histidine, and lysine. Other new advantage of this, of using colloidal uh, Brilliant Blue or G250, is there is no need for the staining step. The other method is silver staining, which is usually used in molecular biology labs because it's much uh, higher in sensitivity. It depends on interaction of silver on the terminal or side chains of amino acids, especially uh, carboxyl sulfuryl uh, groups. And But it also, because the usage of uh, formaldehyde, it's less compatible for analytical tests like mass spectrometry. This uh, procedure can take about 24 hours, but some protocols reduce the duration of doing this procedure and the stain can be stable up to uh, several weeks. So the principle of silver staining depends on reduction of cationic silver to metallic silver. That metallic silver will precipitate or bind to protein and then it gives metallic or brownish metallic color in, on the band area. This is, can be done actually in two methods, alkaline and acidic. So in acidic method, we are using silver nitrate in the staining step. And then we have development step in which we use formaldehyde in alkaline environment in the presence of ammonia and sodium hydroxide. In alkaline method, we are using silver nitrate with sodium hydroxide in 
staining step. Then silver hydroxide will precipitate, and then ammonia is been added to form silver diamine. Silver diamine can bind to protein and form a complex that we can detect because of the color. Typically, we have these steps to uh, perform the staining procedure. First, we have to wash the gel. Then we need to fix the protein by using uh, ethanol and acetic acid. And then we wash to remove the fixation components. And then we have sensitizing step in which we are using sodium thiosulfate for a short time duration, about one minute, to increase the uh, sensitivity of binding between proteins and metallic silver. Uh, but longer time of, of incubation with sodium thiosulfate will reduce the ability to recover the proteins. After sensitizing, we are going for washing and then we have staining step and then we wash and we then we have development step and staining and development differ depending on you are following the acidic uh, method or the alkaline one. After that, we have to terminate or stop the development reaction. In termination step, we are using acetic acid. At the end, we will get a gel like this. The pants will appear in brownish metallic color and the background will be transparent. So the advantage of this method that is simple, uh, cheaper and also reliable with very good sensitivity and also silver staining can be used to stain other molecules like DNA and RNA. But some disadvantages that it can give sometimes some error because of the background and also because we are using chemicals like formaldehyde, uh, the gel or proteins are not suitable for further analytical analysis like mass spectrometry and it's not good for quantification so that it is uh, then we cannot uh, it doesn't express the quantity of proteins well and this method depends on some dangerous chemicals and also so difficult to remove the silver stains from benches and other equipments that was everything thank you for watching